Hello everyone, hope you guys are doing well and enjoying the data processing fundamentals with live Python code series. This video is the very last video related with this series. In last five videos, we have created the Python code from scratch, converted into the class. And now in this video, our objective is to build an UI top of our code so everything what we have done can be processed through this UI. And to build the UI for this our Python code, we have decided to choose the Gradio Python library. In the previous video, we have already started our work and we built the half of our UI. In this video, we are completing the UI. The application which we are building with this UI is going to be look like this. In this application, you can select a particular Python library. Then you can select a particular data set. Then you can select how many records you want based on your sampling methods. We are looking for 21 records on a random sampling methods. Here you will get 21 random sampling records and the data set is specific information about the column, column types, rows and columns, etc. Next, in the data set filter details tab, you could first complete the data set field selection. So now you have selected the fields. Then after you can filter this data set, which is just pulled. We need the filter based on a certain field parameter. So carrot, we are trying to give the float value. We need all the diamonds, which are one carrot or above filter. Here are four records, which based on this selection, if you would want the lower, here are that many records based on under one carrot. Next, we have selected the color a string D and here are all the D colors. After the color, you can also select, for example, depth. You could say I would am interested in the depth over 60. Depth is 60. Similar to that, you can also select a data set from a different Python library such as scikit-learn. Here we can look into the iris data set. We can also look into the digits. It is a digits data set. These are the fields it has. So you can create a dynamic UI to manage your Python code so I hope that after watching the full functional UI, you must be excited to complete this whole tutorial. So let's get ourselves coding. So in the previous video, we have stopped here. We had a Gradio application where we could select a particular data set library. We could also select a data set. We could choose the sampling method, how many rows we want from the data set select and based on our selection we could get the results in this video we are going to extend our application and make sure that we have data set filtering also built into so in order to make the data set filtering in our application we need two step process as you have seen in the introduction at in the first step, what we have done, this whole code became the step number one, and the step number two will be the place where we are going to first get the fields from the selected data set and perform the filtering by entering either value or the category based on our filter selection. As we are going to use the two step processing, we need to look into the Gradio and focus on combining interfaces. Here we have some of the interface which can work together. They could be either tabbed interface, can be parallel, can be serial, and can be blocks. In our example, we are going to use the tabbed interface, something similar to this example explained here. Here you can see there is a tab one, there is a tab two, we are going to develop the similar interface. So before I build the solution for ourselves, let me just give you a little more clarity about how to develop a very simple tabbed interface using Gradient. 
So here is our main application and this UI is being created using these entities. So I will go ahead and I will comment this full code. We do not need these two lines. So let me comment this whole code and we will build a brand new tabbed interface for us. So first we will define, so we will say my app is actually is going to be the blocks. So there are multiple blocks we have then with my app gr dot let's have a header data that is our markdown and if we would want to run this app we can say my app dot launch that's a very simple code let's run it it's running on port 7860 this is our very simple interface now within this app we are going to create the tabs so with gr dot tabs now within the tabs we are going to create the tab item so with gr dot tab item first our item will be data set details here we can have a very simple message so we can say gr dot label hello so you got tab tab item you want to give it a quick run 7861 make sure the ports are correct now you see there is a tab is created what if you want to create the another tab here is the another tab we can say data set filter details here you could see that we are just using label we are not taking any action as an input or output or function anything like that another label called world here another two labels there is a high let's run it as you could see there are two tabs each tab has two labels so now you are getting an idea that how we are trying to create the tabbed interface within the tab item you actually have ability to create rows and columns so with the gr tab item you could say with gr dot row and within the row you can actually create columns so you could say with gr dot column and let's move them here similar to that we just leave only change in the first tab do not make changes second tab first so as you could see that these two items are within one column but if you would want to split them into two columns you can actually say with column so the hello and world could be in two separate columns let's add a text box here gr dot text box enter two and you can see that these items are actually in columns the only problem is because our web page is kind of squished because i want to keep the both code and ui together otherwise as soon as i expanded the web interface wider these two columns hello enter hello enter one enter two and this is another column so these two column design is created so you can get an idea how you could create rows and columns for your ui so this is our gr tab item which is the panel one which has a set this label i will be creating a new item called panel one button equals gr dot button get data set info for the panel 2 I will call it panel 2 button run it so we have kept the panel 1 button within the first tab item the panel 2 button in the second tab item and after we launch our code we could say that this get data set info is the first and this actually it will be get data set filter details that would be actually the second button but you can get an idea so depending on our button title you can see this is a second panel and that is the first panel now we need to learn how to set up our components as input and as output in the first panel let's make sure that this column is our input and this column is our output so we can define input one 
and this is input 2, this is output 1, output 2. Next, we need to define the panel 1 button and we are going to define that at the app level. So this is our app level. So we have to define here at the app level the panel one button dot click. It means whenever this click event is going to happen, we need to select what inputs we want to use, what outputs we want to use. So first we need a function. So we will call it panel one function, which is not defined. So let's define the panel one, define panel 1 and in this panel 1 these are our input but that's the only input we have text box so it means that there is only input 2 we are using so our inputs will be input 2 our outputs will be output 2 because if there were text box we could have used as an input but because these are the labels we are not using them as a output we need to in one and we need to say return in one so whatever the input is coming here it's going to show up here because we are returning as it is if you would want to make little more creative we could actually say this way too so you can get an idea that panel one button click for this panel one button click these are the input 1, input 2, output 1, output 2. So when this click is going to happen, this value will go inside and come out as output here. Run it. Our code is running. We can say, hello, press button. You see that this was input that became output. So this is how you define the input. If you would have multiple inputs, all these gradio components which you are defining here you can pass them here. If you would have two inputs, you could say input two and input three, enter two. You can also pass here input three. And then output, depending on how many outputs are coming from your method, which is selected when the button is going to be clicked. Let's run this. There will be an error because now our inputs are two but we are handling only one input in our function so we need to handle the input two otherwise if you will run your code is going to give error you see this so we need to say input two plus in two run it a pvb there you go so i think that information should be enough for you to understand the next step we are going to work with regard to our application. We are exactly going to follow the row and column design to define the inputs, define the buttons, and for each button, we will bind what our inputs are, what our outputs are, and how we are using a particular function or multiple functions depending on each button click. So first, we need to define our UI. Let me comment this code. Let me enable the previous code. So First, we will define our first tab and this whole UI, this whole result is going to be part of our tab number one. So when we run this code, that will be exactly what we want to render in our tab number one or the left side tab. Enable this code back. So here are these four components which we will take them and we will use here in a one column. This will be, so very first item is our dataset library. So we call it DS library. This will be DS name. This will be DS sample type, and that will be row counts. So these are the four values we are defining. Our output here is the data frame. So second one, so output two is the data frame we will define gr dot data frame and we will also define the output one is the info and that will be data set info. 
So these are the two outputs are going to come from our method panel one button, which is the get data set info. Now we will use all these inputs. So DS live, DS name, DS sample type, DS row count, all our inputs. The method which we were using is the Gradio UI handler. Our output is output data frame. We also are using one output called output info, comma. Only thing we need to go look into our Gradio UI handler. It is exactly the same code which returns the data frame and here we can empty info. We are not performing anything. So when this method will be called, everything will be processed as explained here. Return will have the data frame, but it also will have a label at the top of it where we are going to add the data set in the form of data frame specific info. That's panel one button click. Let's take this interface code back to comment it, right? Now we can launch our application. Let's see, we, we hit an error. Say button click, tuple object has no interface ID. Let's take a look into. So here, one mistake is that because when we are defining, we are using comma. When we use comma, it all became a one item. So we need to remove these commas. So they will become their own independent definitions. So these are all four independent definitions similar to that. I think that was the error. Run it. We do not have any error. As you could see that two tabs are created. Left tab has the select your data set library. Define your data set name, diamonds. Get the sample five rows run it here are sample five rows and here is the message coming out as a empty info so we can add the data set specific information whatever we want so this is very simple code update we have done and whatever we have created yesterday very quickly we have integrated into a tab i will remove this code we do not need we have integrated everything here now if you would want to add this empty info add the data set related information similar to this like what is the data set length number of rows column column types all this information can be added here if we could replace this with the data set info so we are calling read data set at this point we do have the data set specific information so let's come back here in the read data set we can actually return the data frame we can also return the data frame info and this data frame info will be what returned here let's use the data frame info first parameter here we need to build this here we can write the first there is a error in data set info so these two parameters will be output we need to build the df info here and we will use these details to fill our information let's see so first df info equals we can fill this information as a text so this is an array df info is an array this array is basically the data set length second we can say dot append so we are appending means we are filling this value inside the array because this is an array so we have to put this thing inside the parenthesis that is good next same thing we can do here so this value will be appended this value will be appended so we have created our df info so df info is is an array is coming out here that's going to be sent from Gradio UI handler and it will be received at this output info which is a label. It means this value is a string and what we are sending here is 
the array or a list. So we can merge everything in a string. So we could say that df info equals to, we can say everything what we have, we can join dot join the df info. We can say if the df info, the type of this value actually is a list. So if it is the list and the length of ds info is greater than zero, we will join it. Let's run it. Select Titanic. As you could see here, here is our label. Here are five rows. And here is the first data set length, rows five, columns 15. Data set columns are here. And here is the data set column types. If you would want to separate them into five different labels, you can actually create these five labels here from output one to output five, and there will be five labels to tell. And then you can send the five different items here. That's all the way you would want to make it happen. I just gave you some idea. So at this point, our left side panel is fully working. Now we need to work on our right side panel. Let's build the second panel UI. So in the second panel, let's remove this. We need rows, columns with gr dot row with gr dot column. So first we need a drop down where we are going to fill the fields which are going to be selected based on our data set which we have selected. It means we need to collect all those fields depending on this selected data set. So we can call it filter fields are gr dot drop down label equals select field. We need choices and let's just restart with fill something to get us going. Filter value, what the value which we would want to filter. So it will be a text box label enter value line will be default one so we don't need to give the line if we need more than one line then we could add more lines the filter result will be the data frame and that will be our panel 2 button so let's define panel 2 dot button and whenever the click event is going to happen we need first a method to handle it we just call it define get filter fields the return will be the list so return will be a b c let's use this as our method so first you need to define the method second you need to give the input third you need to put the output so output is our filter result which is a data frame inputs are our fields and value but remember first we do not need a result first we need to fill these value a little confusing let me make it very clear panel 3 button so panel 1 button panel 2 button 1 panel 2 button 2 so in the first button we will get the get data set fields and then second we will use the get filtered data set get filtered data set so panel 2 button 1 panel 2 button 1 get filter fields panel 2 button 2 is going to have the result data set in the get filter fields let's add one more filter label gr dot label label info value please click button let's start with that and filter label is our input here let me run this code that the visualization related with this function will help you understand what we are trying to do right side you see here that the fields are going to be needed in order to filter what we want to filter. So for example, if we select Titanic and we want to filter the Titanic based on, 
for example the age if you would want to filter by age then in the second tab we want to first fill all the fields related with titan x so we could select which particular field which we want to select first and then we can add the value to be filtered so when this button will be clicked we need to fill the fields related with selected data set here so get filter field here remember if you have set it up input you have to define here so that is our input one just leave it because we are not actually performing any other operation right now so this is just our input one which will help us to not to have the error which we have seen error here so error was there because we define in the panel to button one that there is a input label it means the value of in filter label has to be handled in this method which is the get filter fields and we are not handling it so even if you are processing or not still you need to handle it run it okay so when this code is running i will show you right now there are two fields a and b if you run this code now there are three fields a b c and if you look into the output is actually showing as a data frame a b c correct so now what we need is that we need to send this field back to our input field correct and gradio does help you what gradio does is that rather than in this panel to button one click we want to be filled the field back this which is a select field so i will create one more button two which is this event and this method will be get filtered data set which does not exist right now so i'm going to just define here return pandas dot data frame empty data frame so that solves our purpose here and this button 2 is going to have these filter fields filter value result will be a data set so i will just call it a comma b first value and second value as enter in the button panel 2 button 1 the field which we are going to fill is the filter fields so we are gonna put this back here make sure you understand in the this event when this button is going to be clicked internally the selected data frame fields will be selected and updated here let's run this code come back here right now we have two fields get fields when this click happen get filter fields return is a b c so you could see here that the value is coming out from this get filter fields but we do not have a way to update our field list if we start with the field two values a b but return should be coming out of a b c we can actually validate it by debugging let's me debug this code we come here we click you see here that our breakpoint is hit the values being sent from here are three here you could check and validate that the this method get filter fields is definitely sending the three values however the values are not being updated and that is not being updated because we need to write a new method where we could update the values in this gr dot drop down so the way we could update this is that we could actually select here gr dot drop down dot update and that we need to update this as the choices it means when this button was clicked the filter fields which is a drop down we need to set the choices equals abc let's run now launch run click abc see at least our fields are being updated correctly in the next step we need to make sure that a data set is selected and then we could update the fields here and to make that thing happen we need to go a little more advanced python related coding so the code which we are using here whenever we are making this very first call let me give a data set 
Titanic, when we make this call, we call this method call Gradio UI handler. This Gradio UI handler actually call this method read data set and read data set method is actually what it does. It use DS selector and DS manager class object to process our request. So this data set is specific information is stored in this DS manager. The scope of DS manager is inside this method. It means that once this method is executed, all the variable are local. They do not have any scope outside this method. And these are actually the class object because we are instantiating the class. So this DS manager, which has this data frame, because this data frame has actually the column names related to this selected data set. But if we come here and we click and we say get data set field, the problem is that the data set does not exist. And how we can validate is we can put a breakpoint here. We run this. If we come here and we look into do we have access to DS manager, you see that in the local variable, we do not have anything called DS manager. Reason is that because this DS manager is local. So first what we need, we need to take this DS manager and make it global means so it has to be outside this function scope. So what we do, we will create actually a global variable and in the Python, you can actually can say DS manager, the object what we have is actually the data set manager. So this data set manager is defined outside this this read data set and here is the DS manager. So now you see that it's immediate. We got a warning that the DS manager is shadowing the name from outer scope. So what we need to just say that this DS manager is we are referencing. This is not a local DS manager. So you can say the scope of DS manager is actually the global. So now this DS manager is going to be available at this point. So even when we run this method, the scope of DS manager is going to be pinned outside this method. So when we would want to come here and we say, can we get the fields? We can get those fields here. So let me run this code one more time. Titanic run. So now DS manager has been filled with data set specific information. So data frame property is populated. Now we come here and we say we need the fields for that selected data frame. If we click here, we are hitting at this point. If we come and look for DS manager, you see DS manager is available now. And DS manager is a class where is the data frame. It also has the method, various methods are available. So if we would want, we could actually say DS manager dot data frame dot columns. Here are the columns. If we would want to say get columns, here are the list of all columns as a list. It means if we would want to update the fields, we could say all fields are these. And these choices will be the all fields now. Let's run it. Oh, first we need to stop the breakpoint. Titanic, come back filter. Remember, right now there is no fields here, like a, just dummy fields. Get data set fields, all fields actually coming out from the selected data set, and they will be sent to our UI. Here are all your fields. If you change this Titanic and you can say planets, here are your planets. You come back here, you run right now. These fields are Titanic. You click here, these are planet fields. So now you have ability to get the fields based on the data set you have selected. And the concept was very simple, but in order to understand this thing, you really need to have a very good understanding of the object oriented programming as well as how to perform the object oriented programming with Python specific to classes. So we have added a line here.
to make our object scope outside function. And then when we were calling it, we defined it as a global at that time that we want this particular object to be accessible outside the method as a global. And that's what we, we that's how we, we were able to get the fields. And same DS global is also going to help us to filter the values because the data is actually stored inside the DS manager dot data frame. So here is your number of fields and you can say please click button please click get data set fields to get your data set field so we could say please click fields fill the so this information will be here we can actually break it and the choice is we empty so initially there are no choices here it's all empty next is enter filter value so field and value, so filter value is going to be fed into here and filter is done at two stages or two different ways, filter by values and filter by category. When we are filtering, if it is a category, we always use a list of string values. If it is the numeric, we always use a number, but we also use the upper, lower or equal, which we need to add a field here. So that field will be called the, you know, filter type and when we are going to use a categorical string field that field will not have any value required so let's add one more field here filter value and we also call it filter value type so the filter value type we can use the gr dot radio label will be filter value type and our radio choices will be we can put integer value we can put a string value we can also put float value it's just to make it more simple so based on this selection if filter value is a string we will know we have to perform the categorical filtering if the filter value is integer or float then we can perform the numeric filtering and reason we are doing is that because it's more clear for us but if we are building application we can actually find the type and we can evaluate according to that we don't need to ask but i'm just trying to add more ui component for us so filter value type will be our one more enter option here so filter fields filter value type and filter value so it means we need to handle three values get filtered data set let's see what we have fields type and value so we could say filter field value type and filter value so these are the three values get filter data set is going to be sent now we will do very simple work which we have done earlier exactly this let's take this do not use this so remember our global variable is ds manager so here will be ds manager dot ds name ds manager dot data frame okay if we would want to filter by category we will use this method let's comment right now so field filter value is this filter field is this and filter type we need to add if you would want that whether we want to filter by type upper lower we will add that next result df equals to ds updated dot data frame so this data frame is going to have the results and this df is our output from this method let's run this code put a breakpoint here use titanic data set for as to filter so let's get the fields first now we have fields use the field as a fair and we do not know what it is so for example if we would say in the fair we want all the values which are above 10 so we need 10.0 we haven't set up our type let's run oh sorry this one get filter data set filter field is none value type is none filter value is 
10.0. It means we haven't put a filter value type. It means we need to select a field first. Here you see that it's just returning the default data frame because there is no filter happens. So selected field will be the fair value is 10.5. Run here. Now you see that filter field is fair. Filter value is 10.0. But one problem is that because this is a numeric value. So when you try to run it, you will see there is no processing because the filter value is actually being treated as a string. So we need to fix that problem here. We could say if filter value in, oh sorry, the value type in because we know whether value is float or something. So it's value type in int or int. We could convert the filter value equals to int of filter value else if value type is in float or float we could say same thing this year change it to float so now we are handling both same filter value can be converted and if it is not then it's definitely going to be a string run it by default this is selecting the upper means any value based on the numeric value will be higher than the selected given value 61 titanic select the fields should not work because empty data set so fields are filled select fair select 10.5 is a float value get filter data set you can see that fair only two values are selected out of these values which above 10.5 so our filter is working for the given condition and here the method is upper so we could actually change this and we can also make sure that we have some of these selection selection by default so in here we can actually choose a value which is a default so the default value is a string similar to that we can also add a radio button we could say filter value numeric filter method and lead filter and it will be you need value from higher lower or so i think we are using upper lower and equal and this choice is upper by default numeric method is one of the input so it will be the fourth input here let's pass this as well filter value numeric filter method And here we will make this and make it lower. Everything is in lower case. Run it. Titanic. Everything is good. Select the fields. We have fair. Let's select a float value of 10.5. The value is upper. Get filtered field. These are two value. Select the lower means lower than 10.5. Everything is okay. Equal. There will be no values because the condition did not match. So these all values are working. If we select the integer, so age is integer, we need everybody from over 50. Let's say age is, nobody is over 50, is all zero, over 20. Everybody is over 20, over 35. There you go. It means our code does work with integer and float but it does not work with categorical. So if we look into survive, we need all zeros. It's a string value. If it is a string value, this is not going to take any action. You see here that survived did not work because we have to build this part because we are only handling by value. So let's come back, fix our code. So we have field name is filter field. So if we look into our DS updated dot data frame in the data frame we can actually select the field name so this is our field name and we can also say the d type d type this will give us the data types which we could handle it so we could say selected field data type is this if selected field data type is either 
a string or if it is object or it is category we are going to perform the this method else we are going to perform the numeric method so these are the two condition and we need to make sure that if is not so if is not none there you go and in both case we need to return the data frame so we have the return status this code is still going to work and even when we haven't implemented this part so here we are passing the field and we are also passing the filter value let's put a breakpoint here run this code titanic these are titanic value let's update the fields now we have fields here we could select the sex which is character value we just try to give the zero get filter data set you see here the field value is sex and if we check what is our data type the data type for that value is an object so we can look into here see what is this value so this value is not none this value is a string and here filter field is sex filter value is zero which is a character just run it and there is an error we can look into this method and see the in so we are using is in method so it is in method means we need a list here however whenever we are passing these values these filter value is not actually a list here so we can make sure that filter value is actually a list so we could say if the type of filter value is not a list filter value equals to filter value dot there is a one trick so what if somebody would want more value so for example there is a condition called male female and x male so you would want to select male and female but not x male or something like that it means in the filter you can actually create this value and you can put whatever you would want to filter so for that reason we will use the comma if there is a comma available then we will split all those values and convert them to a list so we could say a split by comma so this filter value is actually now have the list and that's what is going to be passed here and that's what is going to make this whole code work run it titanic filter get fields sex put zero size string value get data set you see this code now the filter value even is the one is is a list now ds updated oh sorry sex should be the male oh, i was doing mistake here it should be the male filter here are the male female here are the females i don't know why i was searching at the survived survived so now you could see that our filter is working now if you would want to change this to fair we could just come here look for fair we have already tested earlier give this value to 10.5 lower value and that's our filter not only that we can come back and look into the planets make this result to maybe 20 records here is our 20 records we can actually choose the method and use the transit okay so let's come back to here update our fields list so fields list is updated in the method we are going to select the method which is the string we will select the transit filter all the transit value if you would want to select the transit plus pulsar timing come to filter comma pulsar timing now we have pulsar timing so that's exactly what we were looking for we wanted to create an application which could build a ui for the data processing application which we have created the code which we have covered in this tutorial is available in this deep works github repo at 
this developer program. The today's session is available in this code part 4b. The basic Gradio code with the tabs which we have started earlier is available here and later we have transformed this whole code in this main.py which supports our full UI related to multiple tabs and each tab has multiple Gradio components to complete our UI function. So that's all I had for you in this six part series. I hope you have enjoyed the content. I will try my very best to add more series like that where I will take one particular concept and complete it from start to finish. My objective is to create the full code video, show you the real application development as I code. It means error is going to come in and I will show you how I'm fixing those errors to give you a very live environment so that you could learn something very new. Once again, I do appreciate your time. You are enjoying my content and I'm going to look forward to seeing you in my next video. Until then, thanks so much.